but the Stockholm Biochar project is a collaboration project between Stockholm Water and Waste, which is the municipal waste and water company, uh, Stockholm City, a special traffic department where Björn is sitting and then where we have the, uh, the tree specialists. The energy company, uh, they have changed the name, but before they were named Fortum, now they're called Stockholm Exergi, and Bloomberg Philanthropies. So I will start with a picture of Stockholm. This is what we're working with. Um, this area is growing. Uh, we have, uh, I think they're aiming for um, 3.5 million in the area, like 20, 30 or something like that. With that comes that we still want to have a blue city and a green city. We still want to have the trees flourishing and we uh, want the, the, the sea to be, um, and the ocean to be uh, clean. So that's why we, Bjorn came in, came into uh, Biochar 2009. And uh, we met and we uh, participated in an innovation race for cities called Mayor's Challenge 2014. And the reason why Bloomberg Philanthropies is uh, in our partnership is because they are the fund financer and funder of that competition. We became one of uh, five winners, uh, Stockholm, Kirkley, Warsaw, Barcelona and Athens. And we were the only uh, environmental or uh, focused and climate focused project. There were 155 participating cities in, in uh, Europe. <coughs> And we got 1 million euros in the project funding for uh, three years. And the most important, I think, was the support from, uh, from uh, uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies, the project support. So this is the idea. We have um, green waste within the city from parks and from people's gardens. And when I talk about green waste, I mean branches and uh, twigs, not leaves uh, and apples and so on. Leaves will be composed and the apples will be, become a biogas. We are focusing on the, on the woody, woody parts. Most of that material is transported into our recycling centers within the city. Um, so we have 7,000 tons in Stockholm city um, with, uh, with the twigs and branches. Before that was a revenue, they were selling it to burners um, within the city so they could get a revenue from it. And they were producing heat. Nowadays, it comes more with a management cost. It, uh, no one wants to uh, burn the material anymore because we're importing quite a lot of waste. Uh, it's big, better business. So we have a, a management issue with, with, with this green waste. So now we're putting that into a carbonizer. Um, the heat we are producing, we are uh, selling that to the energy company. So we're, they are now talking about climate heat positive uh, uh, climate positive heat production, I think. And um, we also, the, the biochar produced, most of it is used in our plant beds within the city, but some of it is, we are giving it away to our citizens to say thank you for bringing your green waste in and not burning it in your, in your garden. And of course, spreading the word about biochar because no, basically no one knows what biochar is. So the technology, uh, we have a Pyreg unit, P500. And for those who don't know the, the things about that, we've, we, we will talk about much, we have a visit tomorrow, but we will know much more about it. But we are adding around 1,300 tons uh, or 1,400 tons of biomass a year, the capacity. And uh, if I remember correctly, we need uh, 10 megajoules per kilogram, calorific value. And the issue we have is that um, here we need to have 30 millimeters uh, particles and um, shredding this uh, green waste is, uh, is uh, quite difficult, especially when it comes really big machines uh, and produ producing a lot of wood chips in just a few days to take care of a lot of tons. So we have had a lot of stops, especially here. But then the biomass goes through the machine, the, car the carbonizer, um, or here, and the, we're transporting it through. The pyrolysis gas is burned in the, in the flux burner, and then the exhaust gas goes out, and that's actually the run, run the, runs the machine. And then we have the heat exchanger, so we're selling the heat to the energy company, and then we have the chimney. 
the beauty here is that burning a gas instead of burning a, a hard fuel is that we have very very low emissions from from the from the chimney. And the biochar comes out. We are adding water to it to uh, close the uh, the process, or if you have glowing parts. Um, and of course, it's much more convenient for those who are going to work with the biochar if it's not uh, if it's moist and not dusty. So this is the machine. This is the setup. Um, and in our pilot, we were uh, we are able to produce heat for eight apartments in Stockholm. And when it comes to biochar and climate, and biochar is a very stable, as uh, Bruno Glass had told us before, so when we calculate the amount of biochar that we can produce and correspond that to, to cars, and the CO2 emissions from uh, yearly, uh, yearly CO2, CO2 emissions from cars, it's 700 cars, approximately. And in full scale, if we take all the 7,000 tons of biomass, uh, we will produce heat for 400 apartments and um, biochar corresponding to CO2 emissions from 3,500 cars. So how do you make biochar known? Uh, we have done our best um, that we can. We have had, I think it's more than 800 study visitors now. Um, and we have sent out information to around 300,000 Stockholmers to, for them to understand what we are doing. Uh, please try to use biochar and pick it up at our recycle center so you can try it yourself. Last year, uh, Björn's department, they planted 317 new um, plant beds with biochar. And at our recycle centers, 1,500 people have just come to the, to the recycle center to try with biochar. So somehow, we are spreading word, especially allotment groups, uh, usually that comes. Uh, so probably they are bringing biochar also to, the, to their neighbors at allotments. And last year, uh, no, in this, this January, we won uh, the award of best recycling facility in, in Sweden when it comes to waste management. So, how we have, so we are trying to spread the word about biochar in Sweden as much as we can. So, can you make a profit out of this? Of course, we have a, a cost for the machine. We have cost for connections and, uh, and so on. In our case, we have put a little bit too much of uh, money in the groundworks because there's not that many sites in Stockholm that we can use, uh, especially not for that suitable for study visits and uh, close to the biomass. So we had to make quite a lot of arrangements for the, for the groundwork, uh, which has not been very good for our uh, the total eco economy. <laughs> uh, but then we are uh, decreasing the cost for the biomass. Um, we are selling the heat to the energy company. So now they probably will have a new product out where they sell climate positive heat uh, in Stockholm. And we are selling the, the biochar, we had the use for biochar internally in the city um, and Björn is not using uh, finite resources anymore such as sand, clay and peat which is the normal uh, soil use, uh, soil that you use in, in the plant beds. So summing this up, we, we can get uh, definitely get uh, revenue from, from, uh, from producing biochar in, in the city. So learnings from, from the project, just setting up the, the site, is that choose the site based on costs. Um, this is a fairly small machine, fairly small amount of biochar can be produced. Um, you can't have too much costs around that machine. Um, there are only a few biochar plant suppliers, as uh, the sun was talking, as I said before, the Pyrig is a pioneer company, so there is not that many uh, machines that you can choose from. In our case, this has been um, the most important thing, and we are still we have still not sold it really. We have put in some uh, sieves to take care of the, the the long twigs and branches, but the. The winter time and, and the autumn, we, the 
the biomass is quite wet, so it comes up like a big uh, um, blob on the on the sieve, and we get the big pieces anyway to the into the biomass that goes into the machine, and the machine stops. Uh, but this summer uh, it went really well, so we know what we should do. We need to dry the biomass and we need to have another sip. And uh, it's in the procurement process at the moment, I think. Um, we have had a really big strength to bring all these competences into the project. As a tree specialist, what type of biochar uh, does you need or whatever? Around the biochar that is that is required for for Bjorn's sake and the traffic department, and of course the energy company they know a lot about producing heat and using uh, and distributing uh, hot water, and the waste ma waste um, uh, management as well it has been really rewarding to have all these competences within the project. And find out who your champions are um, and engage them. They are extremely important because they will be the ones that um, talks about the project to their neighbors or to the uh, allotment neighbor or whatever it can be. So we have been uh, out quite a lot to talk to the citizens. And this has been a big thing as well. Um, you have to be a little bit stupid uh, when you go into innovation projects uh, because this somehow uh, it's extremely important and it takes a lot of time. So uh, the good thing in Stockholm that Björn has been using biochar since 2009. Some of the some of them already knew about biochar, but uh, some of them did not. So somehow you have to bring in uh, the politicians. You have to bring in everyone uh, and educate them, and uh, especially the the uh, Stockholm Water and Waste who is uh, facilitating the, the machine now and uh, operating it. Um, in, that, uh, in that company, they didn't know anything about Bioshore before, so we had a lot of um, education and information things to do internally as well. And our neighbors. We have power lines, power grids just above us, uh, and they were really, really afraid of, of uh, the word paralysis uh, in the beginning. So uh, I think it was you, Marcel, that told me don't say paralysis, use the word carbonizer instead. So I start to use that word instead. Um, but nowadays we are we are on the same page. But it took me like one and a half years to to uh, to get them on board. So how do you build this? I know that there are some some people that are representing cities in here. So I think this is quite important. How do you build support for this type of uh, project within your city? Um, and first of all, uh, we were lucky to have Bjorn, uh, as uh, he has seen all these uh, benefits with biochar, and we used it for some time. So he's passionate about the idea to use biochar in the city. We met. Um, I got a passion from, for producing biochar, so somehow we, we connected quite, a lot and quite good. And then it was time to. Uh, we got an uh, invite for the for the maze challenge, so we applied internally in Stockholm. Uh, if we could be the the representative uh, project for for uh, for maze challenge in, uh, for Stockholm in maze challenge, so then we have to bring in the politicians since we are in a municipal uh, context, and they were quite thrilled about it, which was great, and uh, Katarina, in this case, uh, our environmental officer, she has been the best champion I think we have had in the project, um, which has been fantastic. So then we start to build the, the, uh, the team, and we got the um, uh, waste management uh, colleague and the uh, competence into the project, and the uh, core from, from uh, the energy company. And then, since we were one of the five winners, uh, we um, had to bring in the mayor as well, because it's called Mayor's Challenge. So they were not uh, happy with only the vice mayor, so we should go for the mayor. Um, even though she put all the, the work on Katarina afterwards anyway. Um, but, but to get somehow Bloomberg happy about the project, we also needed to... to um, go for the citizens. Because when we have election next time, now we had that for a couple of months ago, and now they had changed the majority uh, within the city, 
we still need to have a broad support from the public about the project so they can push the politicians if they want to somehow change the um, idea about biochar. So we have been out quite a lot um, trying to get the citizens to understand biochar and use it. And this is uh, just one thing that we, we have been doing for a couple of years. This is an inspiration from the big biochar experiment from Oxford and Cecil Gadin made in Oxford biochar. Um, so we basically did a Stockholm biochar experiment. They got biochar for one square meter and tried with one, uh, square, with one square meter without biochar. We were out there helping them basically to put it in soil. And they can see the differences. They were taking photos and so on. Um, the problem with, with uh, allotment groups is that they are passionate about the soil. Um, they, the soil is perfect. So to see any big difference from, from uh, for just one year is, uh, is quite difficult. But the second year, we also brought in some people from, from uh, the waste and water company and the energy company, who is more or less like me. I forget to put water on, on the plants and so on. And then we got fantastic results, so like that one, uh, with biochar and without. Um, but, but the most important thing here was the, the spreading of knowledge about biochar, to get more champions to talk about biochar um, within, this, uh, with this, within this group. So what happens now? Um, first of all, we need to make the pilot profitable. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's not uh, profitable since we have all these stops which uh, means that we have a lot of LPG costs and uh, operating personnel costs. Um, we think that we know that how to solve it, and that's a dryer, and that's another sieve. And we will still uh, give out biochar for free uh, to the citizens, so they can try in their, in their gardens and still spreading the word uh, about biochar. And then we, when we have the the equipment in place, we will start to evaluate the machine again to see if we can get profitable. And then from that evaluation, we have to decide how to move forward. Our goal was to take care of the 7,000 tons uh, of biomass that we have within the city. So either stock on water and waste uh, will uh, continue to focus on the 7,000 tons, but more likely, it looks like the energy company has now taken over, so they are looking into pr um, uh, produce biochar from 25,000 tons of biomass, and they expect like, around 5,000 tons of biochar being produced. But they will have the same system, so uh, they will use the same type of material, uh, but from more municipalities around Stockholm. I. Uh, John will talk much more about uh, what's happening in the soil, um, but I, I need to somehow just show this picture because Björn had trees that were dying. Uh, I suppose they were quite expensive as well. He made a ditch in between the trees, uh, so the the root systems in this compacted soil uh, they have quite thick roots. Uh, and as far as I know, the, the thick roots is not very good to uh, bringing in the, the nutrients. Um, but w just o after one growing season, we saw that the, the, we have much more fine root systems that have explored much more of the, of, of the, of the soil, where we have this stone and the macadam and the uh, biochar mix. And this is the result one year after. So we didn't need to cut those trees down. Um, we could uh, just save them with this type of, of material instead. And when it comes to uh, uh, spreading the idea, we also one big thing for, with the mayor's challenge, we should not just do it in Stockholm. Uh, I suppose that Bloomberg Philanthropies is not that very happy if we just will be there and no one will know about it. So somehow we try to spread the idea. And um, this is some of the, the places where they have contacted us. 
Um, and usually they go from access of biomass uh, or need for energy, but most of the cities don't, uh, don't have the understanding for how to use the biochar and what, what the ba benefits of the biochar can be in the, in the urban environments. Um, but the fun thing here is that we have a Mysore city in India. Uh, we have some kind of core group with, uh, with uh, cities that are somewhat interested in, in the replicating our project. And we have Parma in Italy, and we have a state, the state of California. Totally different, uh, totally different uh, technology use or uh, materials as well. Here we have coconut husks um, uh, that don't have any any uh, real real uh, use for, and they are looking into more uh, s simple technology, more like contiki versions. And in Parma, they are looking into the same thing that we're doing in Stockholm, but they will want to have small units more over the city to not transport the biomass. And in the state of California, they have a lot of um, uh, material from the almond industry and so on, and they have dry soils. So basically, the biochar uh, will fit perfect into their into the system. But they're all look, looking into a waste, ma waste stream that they can somehow manage with the carbonizer and produce uh, heat or energy and biochar and have a use for it in the, locally. Um, that was all I had. <laughs> um, I also had to think. Yeah, okay.